I will show you today how to combine your parametric models with AI rendering software to create very quick conceptual design outputs. With a simple Grasshopper script, you can iterate through massing options and go through various styles at the same time to create exteriors like these. This can be very useful as you can fully avoid modeling any details and there's no need to add materials and textures at this stage. In addition, your parametric scripts can be very simple like this one that I'll show you and save a lot of time at the very start. With the explosion of the design scene of the to image AI, it's only a matter of time for rendered AI images to be developed in combination with 3D software and streamline the process for a model to render. For example, Stable Diffusion AI model is currently very popular and integrated with various 3D platforms such as Blender. Other software companies are also busy integrating image generation models to popular 3D design software, including SketchUp, Revit, and Rhino. The workflow I will show you is with Rhino and Veras by Evolve Lab. Additionally, the parametric plugin Grasshopper will be used to assist this process. The ability to combine parametric controlled Grasshopper and the AI is an interesting blend as it helps iterate through design options in both form and material. As in this example here is the one that I will use to demonstrate how it's done with simple massing levels and parameters. Before I go into the AI rendering software, I'll first show you very quickly how to make the base parametric tower script with the classic twisting tower effect. I'll add the bifocal so you can see the name of the components if you're following along. For this exercise, we will start with a rectangular base and rotate parametrically all our floors from this. I will also show you at the very end a very useful way to control these parameters from outside the grasshopper window using the remote control panel to use at the same time with the AI renderer. Starting with the rectangle, I'll plug in two sliders for the length and the width. However, to get these centered in the viewport, we will construct the min and max bounds. The easiest way to do this is to multiply the slider by negative 1 and to create the bounds of 20 and minus 20. This needs to be done for both the X and the Y inputs. We construct the main components to be added to contain these bounds, so the positive number in A and the negative in B. It's then repeated for the Y input and the values are perfectly centered. Next, to actually make the levels of this tower, a series component is needed to create a list of floor levels. The end input is the steps, so the height of each level I'll enter for you. I'll also change the units where I know to meet this make easier. The C input for the count, so the number of levels, which will add to 30 levels for now. If I create a panel, you can see that we have a list of floor levels, however, zero is missing. To add this, I'll use the insert items component and add the zero index, which is the very first item of this list. I'll add zero for the zero meters. So you can see here, you can actually add any number you wish at the zero. With the list of levels complete, it's a matter of moving the base rectangle up in the Z direction and then plugging in the heights in the list to get the levels we want. To get the parametric rotation up along all the floors, we'll use the range to create a list of rotation degrees. For the end input, which is for steps, we'll plug in the value of number of floors, which is at 30 at the moment. However, when we do this, we get 31 values. So remove the extra floor, we can right click on the end input and add the expression x to minus 1. We will then have a range of 30 values going from 0 to 1. In order to make these degrees go from 0 to 180, for example, we just need to multiply by 180. This can be then plugged into angle input or to rotation. The final step needed is to right click the angle input and change it to degrees as the defaults always to radians. Now you can change the range of degrees with the slider parametrically. An additional step to create more, some more variation will be to use a graph mapper, which shifts the numbers proportionally with the curve that you use. It's a quick way to get more dynamic changes of the angles. If you then loft all the curves and then cap, you will get a parametric tower mass. In order to view these better with the floor divisions, I've added a split BRF multiple component with the rotated curves and the cap geometry as the inputs, so you can see all the divisions. The final step is to create a workflow just to bake all options out in the correct layers. If you simply add a bake geometry component with a toggle button to bake the input, and then split BREPs to the geometry input, you can bake out all the current options. However, to add them onto separate layers with the own naming, we can create some attributes with the create attributes component and then make new layers with the create modify layers component. For creating the option names, we can concatenate the option text box with a slide number slider. And if you move the slider, all the layers with different option names will be created. Now simply just change the slide to whichever option you like and hit the bake button. 
To dynamically control the script outside the Grasshopper view, we've used the remote control panel. If you cannot see the remote control bar, go to the view in the toolbar and click the first option. The way the remote tool works is by right clicking on any slider and clicking publish to remote panel. The slider then appears in your Rhino sidebar and you can access it from there. If you move the slider here, it removes remotely in Grasshopper as well. You can do this as well for the buttons. So we'll do this for the bake button too and activate it from the Rhino window toolbar. It's a matter of then renaming all the sliders that you want to control to recognizable names by right clicking them and typing in a name such as floor heights, degrees and uh, rectangle dimensions. Then you can right click any slider, select values and then publish to a mode panel. Fortunately, this doesn't work with the graph mapper right now. And you can see in the Rhino sidebar, all of the sliders are visible with the names that you added and you can control them and even bake the forms without going into the grasshopper itself, although you still need the script to be open for this to work. Now you can change all the parameters as you desire from within Rhino and hit the bake button and the save onto the appropriate layer in Rhino. So I'll do this a couple of times to create a few options that we can test out with the AI renderer. Before we start rendering with Veras, it's important to pick the view that you want rendered. The way the software works is by capturing what's in the center of the viewport and then applying the prompts to that captured view. To get Veras working, it's a simple matter of creating an account and downloading the installer. You can get a free trial to create 30 images, which after you need to buy a subscription. In the command bar at the top of Rhino, you just type in Veras and the interface window will pop up. It's very simple to use. The creativity strength is how much you want to keep to the original image. A low value doesn't change much at all, and especially since you only have a white massing, you want the AI to do a lot of work, so a high value above 90 is ideal in this situation. The style strength relates to how much the image keeps the original form of the input and how much it follows the prompt. So at around 50, it will try to follow the shape of the design while using the prompts to guide the rest. Since it is a trial version, we cannot control the dimensions of the rendering or the number of renders to produce simultaneously. However, with a paid version, it will be useful to run maybe like four images at once to get faster iterations. The bottom four toggles are self-explanatory, so feel free to play around with them to see how it suits your scene. The most importantly is the prompt. So here you have to describe the scene as succinctly as possible, adding architectural styles, various levels of realism, and all this will help guide the render. So here, for example, I've entered a realistic glass tower in London in the summer. It looks pretty good for something so simple and done within seconds. I'm sure adding some simple blocks for the context would definitely help as there's trouble interpreting the empty background in scale and also the foreground. It's uh, adding forests and trees. I'll keep iterating, perhaps trying different moods and materials. As you can see, it's still having some trouble adding wood to the scene or a city context, as in the foreground is still forest there. So it would most likely need a lot more tweaking of the prompts and options. However, in such a simple interface, you can begin to understand the power of being able to make quick massing options and coinciding them with renders, very little setup. Here I'll speed up through some more iterations, going through the parametric options we baked out earlier and changing the various styles, materials and backgrounds. If you start adding prompts such as I did, you'll start getting more interesting organic forms, of course, and you get more interpretations of the mid levels and the towers and various twists. The style level here could be bumped up even more to exaggerate areas like these. These are all saved automatically once generated, so it's very easy to just drop them into an InDesign doc and then to create an options comparison matrix. These are still the early days of AI-generated renderings from within 3D software. However, this is evident of the great potential in the near future with some improvements to power quick parametric modeling with AI renderings. The quality and control is nowhere near up to the same level as Midjourney, although I'm sure as updates come out, will drastically improve the quality and also better prompt engineering, you get better results. Adding some context will also help with the scale and proportions, and it's a good idea, even just simple massing. Definitely soon we'll be seeing more AI rendering assistance to aid in the design process in real time and bring the workflow to a new level. I'll be doing more videos and updating these workflows to improve the quality of the output, so be sure to take a look. Thank you.